The Automation Blocks tool I'm showing you today can clean up Premiere Pro projects in a single click. So I have this project here with various sequences, all kinds of footage and it's very hard to navigate since there is no reasonable folder structure. So I just run the Automation Blocks tool, move items based on their item type and BAM! Now you have all items sorted nicely into bins and only the main sequence is left in the root bin of the project. As you can see in the inputs panel, movie items, so items which contain both video and audio, are moved into the bin footage backslash movie. And items which only contain videos go to the bin footage backslash video. You can configure such a target location for all kinds of items and for sequences for example, you can distinguish between normal sequences, nested sequences, which means sequences which are used as a clip inside any other sequence, and multicam sequences. Let's say we want our sequences to be in a bin called Timelines and the nested ones in Timelines backslash nested. Then we can simply run the tool again and everything updates instantly. Note that the old bin nested sequences still exists but is empty now. Therefore, after running this tool it often makes sense to also run the tool Delete Empty Project Bins to clean this up. Now let's see how we can customize the block code to tailor this tool exactly to your needs. If you have a favorite bin structure, you can configure the default values for the inputs here. So if sequences should not go to the root bin, we can enter a bin pass here, for example. Now let's go even deeper and reveal the main code of the tool by right-clicking here and choosing Expand Block. And just be warned that we are getting a little bit nerdy here. With this green block, the tool loops over all project items and then everything below here is executed for each of them. If you don't want to process specific types of items at all, the easiest way to achieve this is to uncheck them here. So if you only want to process footage, for example, and leave everything else untouched, you can simply uncheck all other types here. Now for each item of all the types you have chosen, first the item type is detected and stored in a variable named item type. Now everything that follows is essentially a big combination of if statements to distinguish which type each item has. First we check for example if the item type is type footage. If this is the case we still don't know if it's a movie, a video or an audio file. So we check if the item has video and if it has audio. If it has both then it is a movie item and hence we move it into the bin for movies. If it has only video, it could still be a real video or just a still image. So we distinguish this in a separate if statement and then move it to either the bin for still images or the one for videos. So all these blue blocks you can see here are just nested if statements which figure out step by step which kind of item we exactly have. And depending on the exact type, then the purple blocks move the item into one of the bins. If you don't want to touch items of a particular type at all, you can simply right click on one block and choose Disable block. Now multicam sequences are not moved anymore, for example. You can also add more if statements to refine the bin structure. This block moves the audio files, for example. Let's say we do not want to treat all audio files in exactly the same way, but distinguish sound effects and music, for example. Automation Blocks is so powerful that you can implement really any logic you want. From project items you can retrieve all kinds of attributes for example. And my item is the item we currently process, so we can simply plug it in here to retrieve a property of exactly this item. One of the available properties is the media pass, which is the actual file name of the footage including the full pass or in other words the file name including the folder where exactly it is located on your hard drive. Let's say we know that our sound effects are stored in a folder with the name SFX, for example. So since the file path is just a text, we could look into the text category of blocks and use this block to search for some text in another text. We want to search for SFX and we want to search it in the file path, so we drag that block in here. So this block returns the actual position where the text was found, but we don't care about that and just want to know if it was found at all. If we hover over the block, we get a help tip, which says that the block returns zero if the text was not found. 
So to test if the file path actually contains the text SFX, we check if this block is zero or not. Finally, we put this entire condition in an if block. Let me also quickly add an else part to it. And let me also clean up this lonely block here really quick. And now this section is executed if SFX is not found and this section if it was found. So we put the move item block in here and instead of using the target bin configured here in the inputs panel, let's hard code a pass. So if the audio file does not contain SFX, we put it in the bin footage backslash music for example. Now we duplicate it and put it here. So this copy is executed if the file pass contains SFX and in that case we want to move it into the bin footage backslash SFX. I see that this has a little bit of a learning curve but I'm sure you get the idea. With automation blocks you can fully customize everything and create your own tools which are tailored exactly to your workflows. To learn more just play with the blocks and right click on any of them to open the in-depth documentation of exactly this block. The help also contains an entire category dedicated to explaining you how to write your own tools with automation blocks. That's it for this tutorial and I'm looking forward to see you in the next one.